When we came to discover the neighborhood we had all once lived in, we found that the past meant something different to all of us. For Angela, going back to this area meant remembering the fear she once had, traveling from the Marcy train stop to her Berry Street apartment. For Michelle, she remembers the time when a family wasn't just the members of a household, but the members of a community, a place where everyone knew each other. And for Chris, he discovered that he was one of the invaders, someone who came to Williamsburg and would wake up in the middle of the night to the sounds of the Coke dealers that would congregate at the doorstep and be open for business the remainder of the night. What we wish to gain from the neighborhood is an understanding of how those that have lived here for over 20 years have been affected by the changing culture in Williamsburg. Uh, I moved here in 1979 and lived here until 1994, something like that. Uh, I was a it appeared to be a rough area then. In the 1979, it was not really tremendously dangerous on the street. There wasn't really mugging or rape or things like that. The violent crime took place between people who knew each other, although that wasn't immediately obvious the first few times you came out. I was jumpy in the beginning. Uh, and a lot of the streets were, back there, South 8th Street all the way to the subway mm -hmm. on Marcy Avenue looked like Beirut or something. It was like rubble. Well, it was incredibly low rent, you know, it was like we had two apartments, two bedrooms that were actually in good shape, you know, uh, for 220 months. So we were each paying like 110 a month, you know, it's unbelievable now. Even then, there was nowhere in Manhattan you could find that. And it was, it turned out this was not a bad neighborhood really in the beginning. Uh, you, you did get burglarized, so that was sort of a pain, but it was, um, I think women perhaps would not feel so safe here, but for us young guys in our 20s, it was, it was really fun. So let's, let's go back to South 8th Street and walk back okay. toward the, uh, uh, to the neighborhood of my former landlord. To this community is like, my landlord's relationship to me was like, you're an, an, you're an intelligent animal who can bring me a rent check and, yeah. and I, I like you, as in either way you like your dog or maybe like if you had a chimp, you know? Um, it, it was a little strange, but but as for reformed Jews, right. he hated them, like oh, that you know really, <laughs> and it was tended to be kind of reciprocal because the reformed Jews would take these guys lunatics, you know. The lighting store is now. A I, long time ago. I, I was always 82 over here. I'm going over here. Oh, big change. Jewish neighborhood is inside. Okay? I live around the corner Masi. I live over there 30 years more. This neighborhood is going to be a very high neighborhood now. Since the people of the Jewish community didn't want to be filmed, we were surprised to find someone to talk to us in the deli. I was born in Israel, raised in England, and studied here. Okay. And lived here. I came in 1963. Oh, 1963. With a Queen Bay Okay. 
Okay. So how do you feel about the hipsters now? The background is all that. Honestly? Huh? Honestly? It's better than the previous days. Sorry? They're less troublemakers than the previous ladies. Oh, oh that's true. Right. They don't play that music. Right. You see that sign over here that says you have to dress yeah. modesty? Yeah. They come in here, sometimes lesbian. Yeah. They start kissing, they start. We have, we have the city customers. Right. It, 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 it's, you know, it's a. Come on, come on, Mr. This is, they have no way to go. Yeah. 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 So we have to put out our signs. They feel like they are. And don't forget, a young Jewish boy goes to school and not saying, Oh, the world is a They are nice to kill. They look at them, they feel like they're It's not bad.